So this past year, I went to see 28 films in the theater. And, well, since a lot of people do this kind of thing, I thought I'd give my list of the favorites of those and my least favorites. Uh, if you want my opinion on any of the other films listed, please ask. Look to see if someone else has asked first before you ask again, because I, I don't want to keep repeating myself. If I didn't see it, it's not in the list, so don't ask about those. I don't know. My ranking system is pretty much just completely arbitrary. It's what made me feel, what pumped me up the most, what just hit me in the gut the most. So, let's start with the least favorite of those, shall we? At number five, Iron Man 3. Now, there is a fairly big gap, I will admit, between this one and the next one in the list, but I liked Iron Man 3 when I came out of the theater. I actually said, yeah, no, that was enjoyable. I didn't really think it was, certainly wasn't up to number one, and I actually, I like number two. I know it gets a lot of flack, but I like the second Iron Man. I came out of this and thought, well, there's good action, but, you know, plot was a little weak. I thought the villain was really weak, and then the more I thought about the film, the worse it got in my mind. Ah. Uh, I, I'm going to try not to give away too many plot details, but this is, and I also, generally I try to separate the films from the comics when I actually know them, which isn't very much, by the way. But this is based on a story called Extremis, which obviously plays a big part in the film. <laughs> and in Extremis, the character of Maya is far, far more important than Adrian Killian, who actually, or Aldrich Killian, sorry, who actually gets killed off very, very, very early in the comic. And here, he's a primary villain. And this is the part that drives me nuts about Iron Man 3, is that there are these two... They have Maya be subservient to Aldrich, and I want, as I thought about this, like, she has more motivation to hate Tony than Aldrich does. Why in the world isn't she the villain? It, have a strong female villain for a change. It would have made this movie so much more fascinating. Uh, and, but, and then I th thought of all the plot holes, and this movie, I know it's the highest grossing film of the year. I, As I said, I kind of still enjoyed it, but man, is this ever, ever flawed to the point where, thinking on it and watching it again, I couldn't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did the first time. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is just, th th this is just full of holes, and Anyway, let's move on to the next one in the list. Number four, th this might be a case of I, it, the movie just didn't appeal to me, The Place Beyond the Pines. It's a classic three-act structure where Act 1 and Act 2, Act 1 and Act 2 kind of follow two fathers. Act 1 is the first father who's a criminal who then gets apprehended by a police officer and killed by the police officer, but they both have sons who then meet up in the third act. I kind of figured out where this was going, especially once they introduced the police officer and showed that he had a son. I was like, okay, the sons are going to meet up. This is kind of inevitable. That's how the third act is going to go. And the first act is actually kind of okay, and then, and then the second act happens, and the second act just goes on forever. Uh, I was in the theater like this. Oh. The, it really, really needed some more editing. Get, cut out some of the parts that really don't matter. <coughs> oh. A lot of some people like this. Oh, and shaky cam. <coughs> if it's just two people on and there's no movement 
involved. Why are you shaking the can? I had a headache coming out of this. Uh, a lot of people like this one, apparently, but no, just not for me. And I generally like weird movies like that, or, you know, out there, more independent films, but no, no. Uh, all right. Number three. You all knew this was coming. Man of Steel. I... Look, 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 look. There are good scenes in this film. The, the scene with the oil rig. Wonderful. That's that's how you do even the, the Jesus symbolism. I don't mind Jesus symbolism in the film. This film hammers it. It hammers you over the head with it. It's annoying as hell. Uh, <coughs> and... Oh, no. Product placement's annoying. Evolution does not work that way. Yeah, a, a metallurgist is going to take a look at this little piece of metal and, oh wait, it, it doesn't match any known element we have on the periodic table. Here, here, have it back. And I'm not going to tell anybody about this. What? Oh, Kevin... I, I don't blame Kevin Costa for this. I blame the writing, but... Pa can't maybe let the kids die. That and, and just if he had continued to go to say, look, no, no, you don't let the kids die. But you know, go and you you have to be careful. You can't let people see you when you do this stuff. At least not until you have a handle on everything you can do or something like that. Just. Don't just leave it at maybe. Oh, and the death. Oh, fucking, uh, the absolutely pointless, pointless, completely avoidable, every single way you can think about it. Tornado. Oh, they're hiding under an overpass. That is such a stupid place to hide when there's a tornado. He would... Pocket. Would have been better just lying down on the ground and rolling over a little bit. Okay, he can't run. lie down, roll over. You're going to be safer than the people under the freaking overpass. Uh, just that entire scene is just so irritating. Okay. Gary, that's uh, Phony Beetle Maniacs and I are probably going to have a Skype conversation about this and the Wolverine, which I actually thought was one of the the best of the superhero type movies that came out this year it's not great but it's better than this piece of fucking crap Ugh. oh and the that last fight scene I hated that last I hated the fight scene in Smallville too that it's just go inside you'll be safe and then proceeds to throw shit through those very same buildings Mm. I, I hated Numbers 2 and 1 more than this. This film, I walked out of it, I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. It, uh, my expectations were fairly high for it, and then it's like, that sucked. Again, there are very good scenes. Another good one would be the scene with him and his mother through the door. Okay, maybe the teacher shouldn't have let every all the kids around at the door. That... But that actual moment with Clark and his mother talking, loved it. Uh, the first flying scene, although it's kind of like, okay, he's 33 and he's only flying now, but the flying scene itself, very nice. Even the scene where, okay, Lois is escaping from the ship. Why the fuck is she on the ship? But the actual scene where she escapes, that's <laughs> actually kind of one of the best. That was my favorite action scene in the movie, and I actually was laughing through that. It's like, yeah, this is kind of cool. But... Ugh, oh, almost every other thing about this film I hated. Okay, I, I've ranted about this enough. Number two is even worse. Number two, Kick-Ass 2. I rather liked the first Kick-Ass when it came out. I, I've got the book around here somewhere. This book, actually pretty good. This one, which I bought before I went to go see the movie, ugh. 
not not so good. And you know what? Spoilers, spoilers. Character gets raped. Completely incidental character. It, it's a case of, uh, as they say, women in refrigerators. It's a case where a woman gets hurt in order to do something for the man, but the woman really has no... Ah, oh, I wish I could think of that term. I really should have looked up that term before I did this. This is all unscripted, so I didn't look it up. Agency. There we go. It's a stupid trope, and it has to fucking end. If you do something to the woman, let her have the agency. Let her get the fucking revenge. Uh, okay. They change it up. It's not that character who gets raped. In fact, it, it, it's not even a rape. It's an attempted rape. And to play for fucking comedy. And <coughs> the character who was attempted to rape actually should have the agency in order to go and kick the motherfucker's ass. And yes, that's the character's name. The motherfucker. After she recovers from the beating she's given after the attempted rape, she recovers and she should have been the one to, you know, punch out the motherfucker and since it's changed from the book and but no she there, there's no fucking follow-up for her it's all to get some reaction out of kick-ass and have him do it and i uh, fucking hate that oh and the caddy mm. chloe moretz is actually fairly enjoyable as is jim carrey in this but uh, they give chloe a stupid fucking cliched high school girl subplot and toilet humor in it and oh no 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 watch the first kick ass it's a pretty good film this one skip it skip it it ha like man of steel it has some moments that are actually pretty good but the majority of it is just crap Ugh. All right. And now, the number one worst movie I saw this year, R.I.P.D. <sighs> Ryan Reynolds, I want to like you in a film. I saw at least some films that you've been good in. What's that one with the... Adventureland, I think it's called. You're not bad in that. You are even not that bad in this film. Oh, nothing else works in this. This is an utter cinematic piece of crap. There's one shot, one of the opening scenes where it's a group of SWAT officers going into a abandoned abandoned warehouse where the the villains are holding up, and li literally, you just see their heads, and you know how my head's taking up about half the height of the screen right now. They their heads are these little tiny. They they fill up about that much of the screen. And they're all along the bottom of the screen. The rest of the shot from here on up is a shot of the side of a building. Why? They, they, they give away the main villain in this. They, they try to play to some kind of mystery. <coughs> along with this villain's motivation right in the beginning of the film so yes maybe the R.I.P. D guys need to figure this out but the audience already knows there's absolutely no suspense in it the oh uh, the acting oh god the acting I don't know what Jeff Bridges was thinking with that accent. Ugh, it, it's annoying. It, he and Ryan Reynolds have zero chemistry. They're, 
the joke is that he's this really hot bl blonde bombshell that if everybody else sees him as that hot blonde shell and he's this little Asian guy. And those two, they're alternate actors who play those two, have more chemistry than Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges. Kevin Bacon's absolutely wasted as the villain. Uh, the special effects are worse than Men in Black. This movie has tried so hard to be Men in Black and utterly, utterly fails on every single level. This is, this is one of the worst films I have ever paid money to see in the theater. Yes, I've seen worse films, but this... I... Even Kick-Ass, even Man of Steel, I felt like I felt like I at least got my money's worth because they were trying to do something. This didn't even try. This is awful on every level. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now that the crap's out of the way, let's get on to the ones I actually enjoyed. So, these are my favorite films of the year. At number five, you have the last film in the Cornetto trilogy, The World's End. Now, I went to see this with a British friend of mine, and uh, I, I think he, he enjoyed this more than I did, because there's a lot of British film, or British humor in this, stuff that you actually need to be British to understand, but uh, that, that said, I laughed harder at this film than I did at it, pretty much any other film this year. Uh, I, oh, if you've seen Hot Fuzz, if you've seen Shaun of the Dead, same actors pretty much, and they, they, you know their chemistry, they get, they just work so well together, but as funny as this was, as good as the chemistry was between the, those characters, and yes, it has kind of a weak ending, but I still, I still enjoyed it, but for all that, what I enjoyed most about this film is that it has better action scenes in it, more, better choreographed. You can actually tell what's going on better than any of the major blockbusters this year. It, it's like, why can't, you know how to shoot an action scene. Well, why are, why weren't you doing Man of Steel or Iron Man 3? This, this is how you do action. It's, the camera's not doing this to, the thing. no, it's just showing you, it shows them do the, do the move, you can see everything that's happening, and it's wonderful that way. Ah, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, well, well, the pretty, pretty much applies to all these. Okay. Number four is a film I know a lot of people hate. I loved it. I've been a Star Trek fan all my life, and yes, the plays on it. Yes, it's kind of a poor man's Wrath of Khan, but I don't care. Star Trek Into Darkness. I. There were two films I went to see twice in the theater. This one and The Wolverine. The Wolverine I went to see because a friend of mine also wanted to go see it, and it's like, mm, yeah, okay. Um, it, yeah, and The Wolverine's good, but Star Trek Into Darkness. Yeah, th th this just worked for me. I can't. Oh yeah, sure. There, there's the gratuitous scene with the uh, the blonde. I just can't remember her name. Uh, in her underwear. Uh, yeah, that scene should have been cut. But for the most part, yeah, I I knew what was coming, but I still loved every minute of it. Um, yeah, it's over the top. Yeah, it's essentially taking the Star Trek stereotypes and playing them up. But. Hell, that's what I went in expecting, and that's what I got. I love this. Um, I do really, really wish they had had the balls, though, to, you know, keep Kirk dead and find some other way other than that kind of stupid uh, triple blood, Khan's blood reviving him thing, because that's just... Okay, so you can cure death, and now you can teleport from planet to planet. So why do you need starships again? But... Yeah, there are major flaws in this movie, but if you just go in, into it expecting a pretty action-packed sci-fi movie, yeah, 
it just worked for me. Uh, number three, uh, speaking of sci-fi movies, this year's big, dumb, awesome robot movie, Pacific Rim. This... Can we just fire Michael Bay from the Transformers movie now? And here, Guillermo del Toro, here. Transformers, it's yours. Please, Hollywood, make that happen. This is what I wanted from the Transformers movie. And this delivered on so many levels. Yes, it's just robots punching monsters, but it is such a joy to watch it. Yeah, the robots go in and go in for to punch and it looks like they're actually having to use weight to actually throw that punch. There's weight behind that punch as opposed to Transformers which is just no no this is smoothly court this is smoothly choreographed fighting this is this is just gorgeous. It's per it's not the smartest story. There, there's a reason I call it big dumb awesome robot movie. Okay yeah I'm ripping off uh, honest trailers there but <laughs> this is the film that got the eight-year-old adrenaline rat yay going. Um, uh, if you're not into that kind of movie, you're probably going to hate this or at least be indifferent to it, but man, this was just a whole lot of fun for me. Okay, my top two are more serious films, and uh, I know a lot of people would have number two as number one, or at least close to number one, close to her to number one, and maybe number one isn't going to be, but uh, both of these are absolutely superb. Uh, number two is 12 Years a Slave. Uh, I was uh, shaking throughout the vast majority of this film. It's it's not even for what's shown. Sometimes it's just what's not shown. There's there are a few scenes where you hear stuff happening and it's focusing on like trees that are in the background with the character of slightly out of frame. That Chihuahua Local Force is absolutely wonderful in this. Um, okay, yeah, I'm a little biased because, you know, Firefly 4F4 and he was the operative, but man. Um, anyway, so like he's slightly out of frame and you just see the trees and you hear him and all this other stuff that's going on in atmosphere. This film has the best atmosphere I have seen in ages. It just... Some of the stuff it shows is disturbing as fuck, but you can't look away. It's just... It, it, it's probably not a film you're going to want to see more than once. Um, but... You will be immensely, I'm not going to say happy you saw it, but you will be, just go see it. It's, other people have talked about this far more eloquently than I can, um, but it, it really draws you into what it was like, or what it might have felt like to be a slave, and it's, even the parts that are pleasant, where people are treating them reasonably well, like Benedict Cumberbatch when he first purchases uh, Okafor's character, um, even those aren't pleasant scenes, because you're all this this person is this other person's property. So even though there's a little bit of respect going on, that, that you never forget that okay, yeah, yes, they'd be nice, but Slave, slave and owner, and and then it goes on to uh, Michael Fassbender's character, who's a, just a sadist. This is... If you haven't seen it, I do encourage you to go to watch it. It will make you think. It will make you feel. And... Yeah, I do want... I actually... Uh, you might not want to see it again, but you will be. It will be worthwhile watching it. My number one film of the year, Rush. This 
I'm not into motor racing. I watch it occasionally, but oh look, there it's a car going around a course, and uh, oh yeah, it's loud, and oh, okay, oh wow, there's a crash. I hope that guy's okay. That that's kind of my attitude towards motor racing. But this, so I'm saying this film is great as a not, someone who's not a fan of motor racing. I, it puts you into the mindset of these two drivers. It, it's, for those who don't know, it's the story of, from the 1970s, of two of Formula One's biggest rivals, uh, James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. And Chris Hemsworth, I, I mean, I, last year I saw, or 2012, I saw him in Snow White and the Huntsman. He was just playing Thor again, and I it's like, yes, I like you as Thor, but the, the, no, this is from... He can act. This guy can act. Uh, Daniel Bruel, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, as Nicky Lauda, also extremely good. These two, you know, like, when they get in the racing course, it's like, it's clear they're rivals, but it's also fairly clear that they... It, and when they start off, yeah, there's some animosity, but it's clear that the more they race against each other and the more the story progresses, they actually gain a level of respect. And maybe they're not friends, but they it's it's their story. It's the story of the drivers, and it's so well told. And visually, the racing scenes, as I said, I'm not a racing fan, but it puts you into the seat. It lets you feel what they feel as this happens. And it, it's... It's the most fun I had at a theater all year. And if you haven't seen this, again, highly recommend it. Go watch it. Even if you're not a Formula One fan. I'm not a Formula One fan. And I don't like any racing. But this, <laughs> this will make you, this will pull you into it. All right. So that that's my favorite films of the year and my least favorite. Probably pretty soon I'm going to release a top ten worst and best hit song of the year video just because uh, I thought it was an okay year in film uh, I've had I've seen better but I've seen far far worse so all right I'll talk to you later folks uh, all right bye